Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to talk about planting and growing an edible landscape. And what is that? So we have edible landscaping, food forest, foodscaping. They're all just different ways to grow food on your property. Every homestead needs a traditional garden for food, but you can also use non-traditional spaces to grow food. Right along here, I have a crepe myrtle. Nothing of value really comes out of there. I'm going to be dropping in a rose. You can eat rose petals, rose hips. I have some plants in here that don't do much in the way of producing food for people. I'm going to change that up a little bit, have a goji berry right there. This is the space we're going to work with in the video. We'll go down another 10 feet in a second. I'm going to show you what I already built as an edible landscape. So this is just another way to grow food. So don't get too caught up in the different terms that we use all the time. I mean, you grow food, you grow food, you grow food. We're going to grow food right in here. We're going to take our greens. It's the fall. It's the middle of September. So we're going to be putting in cool weather crops. So I already started some spinach, spinach, endive, and lettuces. They will get mixed in there. The principles are pretty straightforward. This is a goji berry, not, you know, the best tasting fruit, slightly bitter, adds value in nutrition to your diet, so I decided to keep it in there. What we're going to do is work off of principles. Behind me is where the sun is, and then the sun tracks over to there. This side, it gets plenty of sunlight. So I'm taking this space that used to be uh, Blazing Star, White Daisies, Shasta Daisies, Columbines, um, what else was in there? Uh, purple coneflower. Different things that just really didn't give me much in the way of food for my table. And I'm transforming it over. I'm going to keep those plants in here. I'm going to have to tend a little bit more. And you can see that the work that I started right over here. So in the back go the taller plants. I've already dropped in dwarf fruit trees. These will get 8 to 10 feet tall. And with some pruning, they will stay contained. They're going to go up you know, 10 feet tall, like I said, but the sun is going to be pouring down right into here. So I will be able to plant all along here. Taller plants in the back, maybe a canopy, lower level, different plants. Already dropped in a blueberry bush. You want two varieties of blueberry bush. Another one will go down over here. And I'll show you this once we're, when I'm, once I'm done kind of putting it together. Good to put in roses. They can get out of control. They need to be pruned. Added in lettuce pansies, that is uh, celosia, which has edible leaves. That's an annual. I have annual flowers in here for color, but also annual flowers you can eat. And celosia is actually grown as a vegetable in Africa. So you can add in other plants that you may not, you know, really think that you can use as vegetables. And there's a lot of them out there. So we have celosia. When the frost comes, they're going to die back, but the pansies are still edible. You can eat the flowers on there. Have some kale tucked in there. Swiss chard, and you're sort of getting the idea. The lower level plants will be below the trees, but plenty of sun coming in here. So all the shade is going to go that way, and that's going to be great for this space. I also have, um, let's see, well, we'll come to it in a second, but I have Mizuna, uh, which is basically mustard greens, peppers that are doing well. Peppers grow really well in my area, so I have them throughout this area. These would be something if you're looking at a plan for really to plant in the spring, the summer, and the fall. So of course peppers would go in early uh, summer, late spring, depending where you are, and they can grow in there. You can also prune your peppers down so that they don't overtake the other plants. So this is really a combination of warm weather crops, cool weather crops, fruit trees are going in now. If you're putting in blueberry bushes, blackberry canes, fruit trees, fall is a great time to put them in. This is what it's going to look like when I'm done this whole area. And it will be a sort of ongoing work in progress. Each spring, summer, fall, I'm going to have to change it up a little bit, but I will be able to manage this area so that it looks great, takes care of nature, the pollinators, but also provides more food for me. If you want to subscribe and follow me, I'll show you what I harvest out of here. I'll also show you how I'm going to be, you know, protecting the fruit from squirrels, dealing with rabbits and other pests like other pests like that. But today's video is really about getting it planted. And I just want to come like right over to here and you can see the basic idea. Fruit tree, lower plants right in there, rose, um, that, well, I don't know, getting old is terrible. 
I just said what that was and forgot it. Celosia, purple cone flower back there, some Shasta daisies, those two I'm not really eating. How you manage that, they get big and out of control. Right now, coming out of the summer, you've cut back all the growth. They're not going to really be in a way, they're going to establish for the fall, and the other edibles will, will really be growing, and that's something I'll be able to harvest up until November here. Come spring, these flowers are going to want to take off. When they get to about three feet tall, I'm going to cut them back really harshly. Now, what will happen is, because it's the spring, the Shasta daisies, the cone flower back there, are going to want to flower. They're going to want to produce seed. So they will continue to send up flower stalks. Because I cut them back, instead of them being three, four feet, five feet tall, they're going to be two, three feet tall. So they're going to be stockier. And that's how you can control the size of some of maybe your flowering plants that you're not really um, getting food from in your edible landscape, is you cut them back and you just prune them. The rose too, the rose will get bigger. I'm gonna cut it back, so you're gonna be pruning. Pepper plants will go for about another four or five weeks here, but next year I will be dropping in more pepper plants, maybe even a sprawling tomato plant in here. So you're always managing the space with pruning. Right in the back I have a Concord grape. So that is a Napa cabbage right there, the maroon plant, and here is a Mizuno or mustard green right back there. Those cool weather crops are getting tucked in there. When I'm done this, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some radish seeds and I'm going to just scatter them on there and then I'm going to put my mulch down. So I will also be getting radishes out of there. The whole idea of an edible landscape is combining plants that you feel look good, that you feel you can get food from, that take care of nature, that take care of you, but most of all, look for plants that do really well in your garden zone and they're really good to thrive in here. So right now, we're really changing this over to more of a fall garden, but I wanted to include, include some of the summer crops so you get an idea of how they get worked into here. Each spring, the goji berry will be cut back so that the uh, branches don't come out. They do have thorns on there and that will manage the size of the goji berry. And I will keep that more uh, pruned so that it stays up against the fence. I'm gonna clean out this space a little bit. The blazing star was great, but uh, deer come in and eat it down. It doesn't really do much. So I'm gonna get rid of plants that don't work, keep some flowering plants that do work, but really open up the space more so that I can drop in the rows, which I will keep contained to about this size. I will cut the branches up the crepe myrtle so that you have a nice blend of greenery here at the lower portion with the beautiful color of the crepe myrtle and I think it'll look really good. By removing the branches down there, there'll be more airflow, will help the rows do better that way, but I think it's gonna look really good. Gonna drop in a blueberry bush somewhere in there and then I'm deciding right now if I wanna put in a fig. If I put in a fig, it's gonna have to be pruned well because it will take over this whole space. Maybe another fruit tree, but we will also get in the lettuces, the pansies, the uh, celosia, and some other plants. I probably have, I probably will drop in some pepper plants too so you can get the idea. But this is going to go from something looking like this to what I have right down there. I'm going to start with this area. The rose is going to go right in here and like I was saying I'm going to cut up the crepe myrtle and just expose the trunk right down there. These are three flowers. Of course I forget what they are. I know that I grew them inside my house in January, put them out here. So I'm going to move this group of three and just put them somewhere right along here. This way I'm keeping the plant. When you're digging these up, you want to use a shovel. You want to get down a good six or eight inches and just dig up a big, doll, a big ball of dirt and just move it right over to there. So let me do that. And then we'll just continue progressing right over there until we kind of connect with the part of the garden that I already finished. This area is transformed and you get the idea. Right in front, the pansies are the lowest growing flower. So they're going to be in the front. Then I have endive right there, which is also low growing. That will be in there. That is the Napa cabbage. That's a Mizuna mustard green back there. I have a Swiss chard straight down there. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, I'll just cut in. I've been growing one throughout the summer in a different area. This is Swiss chard that's growing in a different part of my yard, obviously. And this has been growing since May. You can see how large it gets. So this is going to be to the back of the planting that I'm doing. It'll grow up along the fence just like this. But it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, great decoration for the landscape, but completely edible stalk and leaves. So this area is going to provide the greens, some edible flowers, edible rose petals, 
it's going to look really good. And what this was before, it was just really a place for uh, nature to kind of do its thing. It attracted pollinators, all the good kind of insects, butterflies, etc. What I decided to do was blend that along with putting in enough food in here to kind of make this an edible landscape right here. This is sort of a design, not quite a food forest, but the principles are the same in the way that you build it. Taller plants in the back, smaller plants in the front. I'll work my way over, show you that when it's done. I think you get the idea. And I'm really working out of a flat of greens that I started myself, some stuff I bought, and I'm just tucking them in in different places. Again, I want to stress keeping the idea that the plants here will pretty much grow like this taller in the back, shorter in the front. Also found an asparagus plant growing there, which I'll leave. I will be able to actually harvest a couple asparagus spears right out of there, um, and I can prune and manage that. The whole idea, and I don't want people to lose track of this, is that, you know, it looks good when you first put it in, but these plants will be different sizes at different points in the season, and you're really gonna have to prune and manage it, and you can always be tucking in edible food. I think I'll be also dropping in a blueberry bush. In the video description, I will link a video to show you how to plant fruit trees, and you really just follow that for the blueberry bushes, the roses, it's pretty much straightforward. All right, let me finish This up. was a full day's work. I like how this was transformed. I'm going to be adding in more lettuces and other greens, more of the pansies right in there. But we got in the rose, blueberry bush, a couple of pepper plants. Now, obviously, I wouldn't be planting pepper plants like this in September here in Maryland Zone 7, but this is what you would do, you know, in the beginning of the summer, and you would have the peppers growing in here. But I wanted to just show you kind of what it would look like when it's all together. Again, the summer crops are going to die out. The cool crops will fill in and then next year we'll prune and we'll manage them appropriately so that there's enough space in here for everything to really to grow. We'll walk down the whole garden too. I wanted to cut in because I forgot to mention this is a pawpaw tree. So this is going to grow a foot to two feet per year. It's going to be 12 to 20 feet tall. It's going to grow slowly over the next couple of years and I'll prune it and manage the size. And when it gets larger, maybe when it's 12 feet, yes it's out front, so it's going to provide more shade back there. I'll put some more shade tolerant plants in there, but it's going to grow slowly. I can prune it and over the years I will be changing up this space. So it doesn't have to stay this way, but every year kind, of, kind of a of blank a slate where you can drop in different annuals and perennials and really grow sort of an edible landscape rather than just, you know, ornamental plants. If you want to subscribe again, I'll also be doing a video on using thyme, oregano as ground cover and dropping in rosemary all over the place. The same idea except with herbs. The celosia is in, that's edible, it's an annual, so when the cool weather comes, they're gonna die back also. But we also dropped in in the back, Swiss chard, mustard greens or mizuna, and that's some kale. And one of the final steps, as I said, these are uh, cherry bell radishes. I'm just gonna scatter a few just around like that before I put the mulch down. I mean, that handful just covered this whole area. I'm gonna put down a half an inch of shredded hardwood mulch. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, I just wanna cover up the seeds, cover up the ground, and this way I'm not getting dirt, the clay soil splashing up onto the plants. After everything is in, anything that was planted, it's gonna get fish emulsion. That's the water-soluble organic fertilizer that I use. And then everything's gonna get watered in well. You wanna water these plants, depending on how hot it gets, three times a week, you know, every two days, every three days, keep a lot of moisture in there. Because remember, you're planting in a root ball. Let me throw the rest of these seeds in here. You're planting in a root ball. So even though the soil around the tree is wet, the only place the roots can get moisture is where you planted it. So you have to keep that root ball moist for a good month. You really take care of the plant or in the trees and the bushes and let the roots establish and start spreading out into the clay soil. That's why you want to do this in the fall. They're not going to be overly stressed by hot sun and hot days, but you need to keep it watered. As we walk down, you can see the space that's a little more finished. Same mix of plants in there and you get the idea. But instead of this just being a place for pollinators and beneficial insects. It's now a place for the pollinators and beneficial insects, and also for me. I'll be able to pull food out of there. The whole idea is you're thinking spring, summer, fall, transitioning in different plants, keeping the taller plants in the back, the smaller plants in the front. Please subscribe, I'll show you how I harvest out of here, show you how this grows, and I'll show you how I plant it up for the spring. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And don't forget, 
There's a lot of vegetables and plants that are used in other countries that we don't use, like the celosia is used in Africa as a vegetable.